Hey guys, welcome to Country View Acres. So today we are loading the steers. We got them up here close by with a bucket of grain. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and kind of open up our little corral we made up. See if we can get these guys inside. And then hopefully we can get them inside the trailer. Look out. Hey, no kick, that was a kick. That's why you don't stand beside him. Look out, buddy. Here you go. Come on. Here's you some grain. All right, they're locked in the corral now. So now the trick is going to be getting them down the chute. They'll probably freak out as soon as they realize they're locked in here. Gotta go down that alleyway. No, not you. You gotta go. Yeah. Nope. Nope. There you go. Go that way. Nope. You, that was the right way. That was the right way. No, don't tear that up. Go that way. Hey, no, go. You gotta go down that alley. There we go. No, that's the right way. That was the right way. No, that was it. Come on. No, you don't try to jump that thing. You'll tear it up. Come on, back, back. Unfortunately, I may need you. Ready? Shrink it up a bit. Good boy. There you go. There's another one. There we go. No, 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 no. You guys were close. Come on. Get in there. Go. All right. Now see if we can get that one. Come on. Come on. Good boys. No. Don't kick me. <laughs> he got right beside me. I thought he was going to kick. Come on. There you go. Go in there. Go in there. Go, go, go. There you go. Good boy. Well, I won't say that went perfectly smooth. We had to end up shrinking the, we pinned down, we pulled these panels in next to this other one so it was a pretty tight little area so that they really, to stay away from us, they, they really had to go down the chute. So anyway, not the, the best loading, I guess, but um, maybe, the be maybe the best we've had, I guess. We always seem to kind of struggle getting them in a trailer. So the steers unloaded at the, uh, the processor just fine. Everything went really well there. And they ended up being 1,150 pounds, two of them were. And then one of them was 1,180 pounds. And I think that was just, I think that was kind of like the perfect weight. I think I was kind of shooting between 1,100 and 1,200 pounds. It's hard to judge their weight sometimes. You just think they're a lot bigger than what they are. But uh, I think they ended up just being about the right weight that I was shooting for. Now, after I've had time to think about this, um, I, I think I learned a few things trying to load the steers. Everything was a little chaotic that day, trying to get them, them loaded that morning. So I was trying to do it where I was inside with the steers and Rebecca was on the outside. I didn't want her to be inside with them. And what went well was actually the alleyway ended up being the right, that 28 inch width that ended up working out just fine for us. But the problem was, it was this corral area we built. It was almost like the wrong shape. So it starts off over here at this gate. And this is probably, I'm going to say this is at least a 16, maybe an 18 foot gate right here. And then when it comes in here, it actually opens up bigger. It actually kind of goes at an angle back this direction. 
and it's probably 24 feet wide. And for one person to try to corral steers in that wide of an area, you try to go toward one, the other one would try to get around you on the side. And it was just way too wide for one person to try to push cattle through because they kept on wanting to get around me. Because you can see this gate is shorter than the crowd panels. It's less intimidating. They wanted to get close to this gate. In fact, I think they wanted to try to jump this gate um, if they would have got around me. So we ended up taking these corral panels and we shifted them this way and we put them right against the other corral panel. That way they couldn't actually get to the gate. So that made this area small enough that one person could apply enough pressure to be able to get the steers to go down the alleyway and in the trailer. Plus Rebecca was standing out here on outside and of the corral panels and she was able to apply a little bit of pressure from the outside and they just kind of wanted to move away from us and into the trailer mm -hmm. so in the end i should have built this more long and narrow narrow and narrow enough that they wouldn't try to go around you i kind of built it like big like a corral and it needed to be more shaped like a bunching pin or or a lane and maybe shaped more like a, a lane uh, to be able to push the, the steers down and now that I know that, when I build this permanent corral, I'll know to make any lane or anywhere that I want to try to push cattle down, I'm going to know not to make it too wide um, so they don't try to go around you. So I can at least apply that to the corral when I get it built. And at least I learned it now before I have any posts in the ground. So every year I have people ask, how much did it cost to raise the steers? So to come up with that number, I have to understand how much we fed them. We did grain finish them. I bought bulk feed to, fin to, to feed them these last three months. There's still quite a bit in there. Um, so I need to figure out how much is left. I can kind of come up with how much feed we actually did use. And I want to clean these out as well. I want to get this cleaned out. I'm going to get the rest of this feed hopefully stored in some barrels and just clean these feed wagons out for the year. And after that, hopefully we can come up with a weight and I can uh, basically come up with the cost of raising the steers. We're gonna find out how much one bucket of feed weighs and then we can calculate this up as we empty it. All right, a bucket of feed is 27 pounds, four ounces. So I've ran back, I've pulled the receipts, I've ran the numbers, I think I know exactly what it cost to raise the steers this year. So at the beginning of summer, about 6,000 pounds of bulk feed to feed the steers. And um, I was able, so what was left in here, I was able to put 1,000 pounds in three drums over there. I've already fed out a couple hundred pounds to the pigs. And um, there's still probably 600 pounds in here that I wasn't able to get out. So that comes out to 4,200 4, pounds that we actually fed the steers. So that was 1,400 pounds per head, per steer. Um, and at 20 cents a pound, that came out to $280 to grain finish the steers per head. And I know that's an additional cost to, to finish them that way. I think it does speed up the process, gets them to butcher weight quicker. And there's not a lot of demand for grass-fed beef around here, so this ends up selling better. So back in the spring, we bought three feeder steers. They were an average of 750 pounds each. I would prefer to buy them probably a little bit smaller, closer to the 500 to 600 pound range, somewhere in there. Um, but these guys cost, at the time, the cost was $1.48 a piece. So each steer was initially $1,110 to buy each steer. So throughout the year, there's a, some additional costs. We uh, probably bought 100 pounds worth of mineral for the steers. We also have to give them drinking water, which we have to buy off of a rural water system. So the, the steers, the three steers would go through anywhere from 30 to 100 gallons of water a day, depending on how hot it was. We don't have a working well right now, so we do have to purchase that. 
and um, we did feed them hay. I don't have enough pasture, so we had to supplement with hay. If everything was set up right, there would probably be very little hay fed to them. But I'm gonna say we probably spent an additional $110 per steer for hay, water, and minerals. So that comes out to the total cost to buy, feed, and supplement the steers, $1,500 a head. So right now at the sale barn, slaughter beef is going from about $1.75 to about $2 a pound. So if we say we get somewhere in the average, we get $1.85 a pound just at the auction house, okay? You can always sell this to customers at a, at a different price, but just auction house price, that would come out to $2,100 roughly per steer that we would make. So that's a profit of about $600 per head if we just took them straight to the auction house. So if you decided to grass finish your beef, you could get closer to maybe $900 a head, and that's at today's prices. I mean, this changes per month, per year. That's this year, so this isn't like this is repeatable by any means. But if I decided to grass finish them this year and I had the pasture to do so, which I don't, um, I could have got closer to $900 a head. But I probably would have had to keep them a little bit longer uh, to get them to where, exactly where I wanted them. So obviously $600 is not enough to live off of, but that's not really our goal. You know, we're like a, like a homestead, like a, fa a small farmstead. And we started off growing food for ourselves. And then it was for us and family. And then it was for us, friends and family. And now it's kind of, it's grown to, we have, we've kind of getting more and more customers, but they're all people we know. And, and people we want to be able to provide, uh, you know, good homegrown food to. And I think we're up to somewhere where we're up to maybe 10, 12 customers at this point in time that, that we're selling to. And that customer base will probably grow over time. And then the business will grow a little bit over time as well. But our main goal was not to make profit doing this. Our main goal was to provide food for ourselves. And it's just kind of grown a little bit from this. Um, so if you wanted to do this and be like a full-time person and be able to live off of it, yeah, you really need to be probably closer to the, you know, 50 to 100 head worth of cattle to be able to make a, a decent profit off of, of something and, and call it an income. This is obviously not an income. This is just, it's almost like play money or it's just like a little bit of money to reinvest into the property to build more fences and, and to, to buy more stuff for, for growing food. So that's what, what it is for us. Um, you know, we're not necessarily doing this, and this, this was never the point, was to, to go out for us and to make profit off of this. Now, we, our, our goal is to, is to basically fill our own freezers, and we feel good about helping other people fill up their freezers as well. So I will say, I have really enjoyed raising feeder steers. I think they have simplified everything they simplify everything so much i think that it's definitely the way to start if you're looking to grow food for you and your family or if you're just wanting to start out i think feeder steers are the way to to, to get started and um, it's a great way to start learning i guess but you buy them in the spring and they leave in the fall right or late winter and then you don't have to deal with all the problems that come with winter keeping animals through winter like creates a whole new set of problems, a whole new set of difficulties because you don't have pasture. Normally they're in a feedlot. You end up with mud problems. You end up trying to feed them hay. Um, you have to have enough hay to feed them through the winter time. Um, so you have feed costs involved uh, throughout winter. And then the water situation is just terrible because that's like the worst part of winter is keeping the water flowing and thawed out. That's definitely what I think is one of the worst parts of winter. With feeder steers, you don't have to deal with any of that. And that goes for like feeder pigs as well. You know, get them in the spring, they leave in the fall, and um, it is a great way to start out. And it's a great way to just go if you're just raising them for you and your family. Um, now later on, if you wanna take it to the next level and get mama cows and start a herd, um, you've already got a, a good basic knowledge before you dive into the whole the whole thing. So I think definitely feeders are the way to go. Um, if you're looking to do it for profit, obviously there's going to be a smaller profit, um, probably margin there because you're having to buy your steers. But like I said, if you're just doing it to learn something you want to do, something you want to get started in, you're doing it to provide meat for your friends and family, 
definitely start off with the feeder steers. It's definitely, definitely the way to go. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.